In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to customize the player in Articulate Quizmaker 360. So we're in a practice quiz right now. We're using the practice player setup dot quiz. And you can use that. It's in the downloads. Or you can use your own quiz. It really doesn't matter. Uh, what we have here in the practice file is we have two question groups. So one, two, and then they each have four questions. So I did the two groups so you can see how they display when we look at the player. Now to customize the player, we're just going to go up to the player button. And that's going to open up your player properties window. And you can see that we've got a number of things we can modify. And then we get a live preview of that player. So let's go ahead and look at the features that we have. The first one is our features list. And this is going to be a list of all the features available to the player. So we can see I have a quiz title. And we can see that right here. By default, it's going to pull in the quiz title that's actually the quiz title. And you can click in here and title it whatever you want to. If you don't want it to be visible, go ahead and select it. And you can see when you deselected it, the title disappeared. And if you want it to appear again, just go ahead and reselect it. And you can see that we now have the title again. You also have a question list, and you can choose to show or not show the question list. When you click on the question list, it's going to be a list of all your questions. And you'll notice that these questions right here are a little long, so they're being cut off. And when you roll over them, you can see the actual question. Now I'll show you how you can get them to wrap, but by default, it's just going to cut them off. Then we have our question list. So you can display the question list up here on the left, or you can choose to display it on the right. And you can see that it's moved over here. We're going to move it back to the left. And when you look at the question list, one of the things you'll notice is that there's no group one or group two. We had two groups when we were managing our questions, but for the end user, they don't see those groups. So they just get to see one list of questions or all the questions that are part of the quiz. Now if you want to create some distinction, you can always insert a blank slide and then lock it to the group that we were looking at in the other tutorial. And then you can title that blank slide. And that's kind of a nice intro to groups. But by default, you're just going to get a list of questions. Now you'll notice also that the questions are long, so they're being cut off. But as you roll over the questions, you'll see that you can actually see the entire question. Now over here, you can see that you can submit one question at a time. So you'd look at the question, make your choice, and hit Submit here. Or you have the option to submit all the questions at once. So then now you have the previous Next buttons. So they would be able to jump around the question list, answer questions, and when they're complete with everything, just hit Submit All. And that will submit the quiz for grading. Now you can also allow them to not answer all of the questions. It really is just a matter of what your preference is. We're just going to go back to Submit One at a time. And then over here you can see that you have some controls. Uh, we have a volume control so the user can turn the volume up or down. Uh, one of the things I recommend is that if there's no audio in your quiz, it's a good idea to disable the volume control so that it's not visible. And the reason I recommend that is because if they see a volume control, the user may think there's actually audio there and they're just not able to hear it. So they're going to think that something's wrong. And that may then instigate uh, some calls and and take up some time. So if there's no audio, it's good to just get rid of the volume control. And then you have a seek bar. And the seek bar is nice because it's kind of like a player, right? So it's going to indicate uh, how much time you have left. Um, works great if you have some video or audio in the quiz. Again, if you don't have that, it probably doesn't make sense to have the seek bar. It's just a matter of whatever your needs are. So we're going to go ahead and turn that off as well. Now when we look at the question list, that's going to be a list right here is a list of all your questions. Now you can see the distinction between one and two. So these are your groups. Uh, but the end user doesn't see that. Now let's think about a couple things. One is the questions are kind of long. So let's say I don't like the long questions. I don't really need um, questions that have all this text in there. So I can change the title of the question. So I'm going to click on the question here. I can double click. And I can type in something or I can select a question and I can click on this icon and then I can type in a question. So I can actually make my question shorter. And it's only going to change how it's displayed in the list. It doesn't change the actual question on the slide. Uh, you can also hide or show questions. So let's say you had a list of questions and say question one you answered it and that actually branched to question 2.1. Um, 
and you might not want to show all these other questions in between. Uh, you can hide it so that they don't necessarily know that they're branching to other questions. So you can uh, remove them from the question list. And you can see it's removed from the list. Now it doesn't remove the questions. It just removes them from the list so they can't jump uh, to the questions from the list or they can't see them in here. But the questions will still be part of the quiz. And then if you want to restore those, just go ahead and reset the questions and it'll reset them to the original titles. Now if we look down here, we've got some additional settings. And the first one is navigation. So you can see you have three options, free, restricted, and locked. With free navigation, that means they can click and jump anywhere they want to. So let's say, let's move this over here. Let's say it's free navigation. They can jump to this question. They can jump to that question. It really doesn't matter because you've allowed them to do that. Uh, locked or the restricted navigation, what that does is it'll, and you can only go forward. So you'll go forward and then you can't click here because you need to go through the other questions, but you can click and review previous questions. So you have free navigation where you can just click around. You have restricted navigation where you can keep moving forward and then you can go backwards, but you can't jump ahead of where you're at. And then locked navigation is locked. So it's just locked to this current question. So you can't go backwards and you can't go forward. So it's just a matter of what your needs are. Now here's where we can wrap the long question titles. So I have these really long titles. I'm going to wrap those and you're going to see when I hit OK that they're going to be uh, wrapped and we'll see the entire question. And then one other thing here is you can display correct or incorrect icons. So that's what I kind of like about the question list is that as I'm going through it I can actually see what I'm getting right and wrong. So we'll go ahead and leave that enabled. We're going to hit OK. Now these Colors and effects are pretty straightforward. Uh, you have your colors. Uh, you can ha you have your player color right by default. We're using this. Uh, you have some pre-built colors, and then so you can change those. If you want to edit the color schemes, you can do that. I'm going to go ahead and put it back to default. If you want to edit the color schemes, you can click on the advanced editor, and then this is going to give you options to edit every single thing on the player. Now sometimes when you look at this, especially if you're just getting started, this might seem a little overwhelming. That's okay. I usually just tell people click on one of them and then change it to yellow and then you'll see what's being changed and that'll give you an idea. And eventually you get used to doing that. And then once you create the color scheme you like, you can always save that and then use that in other players. And change your background color and you can also change the font that becomes part of the player. So let's just go ahead and just do something wacky here. We're going to change it to the Action Man, the kind of cartoonish font. And you can see that everything's now set up for Action Man. So we've got our Action Man. We colorized the player. Everything looks great. Uh, text labels. You have a list of the labels that you can do. And this is not just labels on the player, but you have labels throughout here. So you can see all the different labels. And then here's where you can customize that. You also have language options. So if you're doing different languages, you can see there's a lot of built-in labels. So you don't need to change those. And then you can customize those if you want to. And then here you can uh, load or you can save and export uh, the labels for others to use as well. And then the other settings here, uh, you have your browser settings. So how do you want it to display in the browser? Um, you can have it display at the current browser size. You can have it resize the browser. It really just depends on what you want to do. And then you can lock the player. There's going to be a set quiz size. And if you lock it, you're going to get the best view. If you allow the user to scale it, which I think a lot of people like, you allow them to scale it. There's going to be some image degradation because they're scaling images up and down. Uh, but that allows them to have a little bit more control of how it displays in their browser and also um, how they can look at it on their screens. So I kind of like to let them scale it, but it's just a matter again of what your preference is. And then you can launch it in a new window and you have some settings there as well. And then these are pretty straightforward. So what happens when they resume it? Uh, do they get a prompt to resume? They always resume or they never resume? And then you have left to right or right to left uh, text reading options. And then um, when you're working with your player, once you've made all your customizations, uh, you can open something that you've already saved, right? Right now we just have the quiz maker, the default. Uh, you can save 
you can import and export players and then again you can reset it and so everything goes back to the default settings. Let's go ahead and preview and see what it looks like in the preview. So we're going to come up to preview and we're going to preview the entire quiz. So right now we're previewing it. We can see our changes, right? So the text is changed to that action man font, so it's kind of cartoonish. We can see that the player colors changed. Uh, we've got the one submit. Um, there's a question list here. I can't remember if I locked it or not, but I guess I can jump around. I can't really tell that I'm jumping around. And we're going to come back here. I'm going to make a few choices. So we're going to submit that. I got that right. Let's do a couple that are right. And let's do one that's wrong. So now let's look at the question list and you can see that I've got this indicator here. So we can see the text is wrapped and I've got an indicator of right and wrong uh, questions. So this is what it looks like in desktop view, but what does it look like in mobile view? So if I go to the tablet view, I can look at that and I can see I have my responsive mobile player. So the player is not going to inherit those customizations we made because we have a, a streamlined mobile player. And uh, what you'll notice is when I click on the menu, it's giving me the information I already have so I can see the right wrong. Uh, we'll go ahead and jump to a question. Let's let's um, submit that. And uh, let's go to the phone and see what it looks like on the phone. So I'm going to go ahead and submit that here as well. And then I'm going to look at what we have. So you can see how the menu works on the mobile device. That's basically it when you're customizing your player. Again, you have a lot of flexibility, especially with the colorization and those things and some choices in how uh, the player behaves and, and what people see. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to jump in the community and ask. And be sure to watch those other tutorials because that will help you learn more about working with Quizmaker.